we're back at Prospero's Pit with a really special guest here to just like inform people, anyone who's listening. This is Jason Pruitt, Coach Pruitt, Coach. Um, and yeah, this is the guy who started me on my podcast kick. He started it all. He created a nightmare. But hey, welcome. Hey, <laughs> hey man, I'm um uh, I'm happy to see the new digs, man. Um <laughs> yeah. I was telling some of your customers that I heard about it, mm-hmm. but I didn't actually know what to expect until I walk in here and then I'm like, man, this place is awesome. Yeah. I'm I've well I've told I've you've been getting filled in from my parents. Right. Yeah. But um yeah, no, this place is spectacular. It's really become my home, honestly, away from home. But I've <laughs> I gotta give you a better intro. You give me you on our so when when we started our podcast back in twenty twenty called Beyond the Bounce, I remember you would always do killer intros of your guests. So let me try let me run this back. <laughs> so we got the one and the only in this building. Wait, what was your record last year? Twenty four and three? Twenty four and three. Twenty four and three. You're you got um, snubbed <laughs> snubbed in the plan, <laughs> snubbed in the plan. Former Laverne women's basketball head coach, champion, <laughs> Jason Pruitt. All right, here we go. Let's go. Happy to be here. Ready to be, happy to be here. Finally got to check out the new digs. Yeah, fresh off the eight hour drive. Fresh off eight hour drive, man. It was yeah. um not a bad drive. You um. You don't realize how flat Kansas is yeah. <laughs> until you drive across it. Yeah, the once you get past out of Denver, that that drive is brutal. Man, I was looking. You know what I'm most upset about? I didn't see any Buffalo Roman this time. Buffalo Roman? Yeah, you, when I came, so in 2000, ooh, 2000, yeah, 2000, my college head coach had played at Kansas. So we were on the way to Hutchinson for the Junior College National Championship. Mm-hmm. And we actually got to practice – at uh, the field house on the campus of Kansas. I think it's John Naismith field house. And um, I remember my coach pulling over to the side of the road because people were just at Buffalo. Like we have in Alabama, we have cows. Mm-hmm. They said Buffalo. So I was literally looking for Buffalo to pull over so I could run over to the fence and, and do a Buffalo selfie. I had no idea that Kansas had Buffalo. Yeah. That's the first time I had ever saw one. Well, there you go. <laughs> the outsider is introducing me to the new stuff. I thought he was a new buffalo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just a big hairy cow. <laughs> no, Jason. <laughs> That's, um, but yeah, we, we I touched on it. You had a you had a brutal ending to your season at Laverne. Oh man, you got any have... words on that, Coach? Oh, man. <laughs> I, I still have nightmares about it. Um, we were twenty four and three. We were nationally ranked in both polls for the most of the school year. Uh, we were the coaching staff of the year. I'm the Region 14 D3 Hoops Coach of the Year. The region goes from the West Coast to Texas. And we didn't get in a tournament. And I'm like, we went from November the 9th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, somewhere in there, all the way to the middle of February, and we didn't lose a game. And uh, they was like, you, sir. Can go fishing. Yeah. Well, they, <laughs> sounds like they have a, some personal vendetta against you. Well, you know, they started throwing out all of these analytics and you didn't play this person and you didn't play this schedule and you didn't play this. But when you go through the th- thick of things, I actually mm-hmm. have my own analytics person. His name is Ali. Mm-hmm. And they were tracking us and we were tracking them at the same time. And a lot of the teams that made it, we were a lot better then and record-wise. But they like strength of schedule. You, look, you never know what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. So, you know, hopefully we won't have to go through that again. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you got some new digs, speaking of. You're yeah. mo- you're on your way to Chicago from SoCal, Laverne. Um, what's the school you're playing, you're coaching at now? I'm going to Elmhurst. Elmhurst. You know, Elmhurst University in Elmhurst, Illinois. All right. Uh, so I'm, I used, I'm a leopard. I used to be a leopard, now I'm a blue jay. Okay. All right. So I'm a little bit more graceful now. Yeah. I, fly. I like blue jays. Yeah. Blue jays, that's kind of tough. Trying to get a blue jay hat. Yeah. D- is it the same logo as the Toronto Blue Jays? It looks, it looks similar. It looks similar. It looks similar to okay. it. Okay. So. How are you feeling about the move? You know what? The move is is overdue. Um, you know, a lot of people, some people know, some, pe- some people don't. I've been commuting for the past three seasons from Chicago to Los Angeles. What's yeah. funny is... I'm very upfront when I recruit kids and I tell them, hey, you know, I live in Chicago. I'm going to commute. But some of my conference peers, 
you know, would tell, if we were recruiting some of the kids, they'd be like, hey, you know, Coach Pruitt really don't live in L.A. He's like, never here. You know, and of course, the parents would come back and tell me, like, why are they saying that? You're very upfront. I'm like, yeah, but I've been commuting for the past three years. You are a world class driver. I don't know how you've been doing it for this long, honestly. Anytime I think about your commute, it makes me. This is. Clench. Well, shout out to. You know, Spirit Airlines and Frontier. You know, I, shout, I ride them. Yeah, big shout out to Spirit. Sponsor this podcast, Spirit. <laughs> know, right? And Frontier with that Frontier Pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, they made it very uh, easy for me to go back and forth because, you know, Chicago is a hub. Mm-hmm. You know, this is my fourth time driving cross country yep. because it's usually when I have to transport a car or something. I'll hit the highway. But, like, again, shout out to Spirit. We need sponsors in Frontier, you know. <laughs> but, hey, without, without them, it wouldn't have been possible. Yeah. I mean, but just your commute from, like, L.A. to Laverne was also a nightmare. I spent – people don't realize how far that is. I don't yeah. think I realized how far it was until I started doing it. But I probably I was, didn't realize how far it was until you started driving. I, was like, I probably, how long? probably was spending $400, month, $400 a month on gas. Oh, my just God. Just to make that commute. Yeah. I you know, but <sighs> – you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. You know, when we first moved there, it's like, man, I ain't moving out there. I want to be in the city. But right. when you live in the city, don't nothing really go on anyway. So you're like, yeah. but it's, it, it was different. You and know? you're still paying $4,000 on gas anyway because everything is 45 minutes away. Yeah. No where you're living. You know, the good thing about it is I went against the traffic flow. Yeah. So that was real good. Yeah. <laughs> That's because you're traveling at like 2 in the morning. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's the only way you can do it. <laughs> it's been plenty of nights where I pulled up in front of your house. Yeah. And was too tired to get out and took and went to sleep. Took uh-huh. a nap. I said, let me take a nap before I actually go in the house to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, because my, my bedroom's in uh, the garage of my parents' house. And I remember you'd be, I'd be up because I, I, what am I, what a, what I got going on at that time? I remember during COVID. And you just coming in through the side door, and there's a couple times you gave me a heart attack a little <laughs> bit because I was either coming asleep or not, and I just heard the door, and I'm like, I'm gonna just assume that's Jason. So, for people that's listening that don't know, this is the pool house or where I stayed at after yep. we sold our house. Yeah. So give them some context to it. Yeah. So. This was my roommate for a little while. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> and I had a window right next to like my bed, which was right next to the side gate. Mm-hmm. So anytime you'd come in, I'd hear you right walking in. <laughs> <laughs> or if you didn't hear me, um, Junior heard me. <laughs> yeah, Junior, the the terror. <laughs> from the deep, my little tiny, our little tiny terrier who just nonstop yip yap. But Laverne obviously was a stepping stone that had to happen because now you're going back to Chicago. Well, but... you know, when I I did so, I didn't take it as a stepping stone. Uh-huh. I took it because I got tuition to change, uh-huh. oh, <laughs> so yeah. my kids could go to college for free. <laughs> hey, because you know, that... you know people... that'll work. That'll work. <laughs> you know, people don't. So I was at the University of Antelope Valley before Laverne. Uh-huh. I had just won conference in the first year. Yeah. And I left a top 25 program to take this job at Laverne, one, because it was closer to home, two, because, you know, of the education aspect of it, mm. and three, I got tuition exchange. They told me I could get tuition exchange, and they had signed an agreement through HR that I could still work in television mm-hmm. as long as it wasn't 40 hours. So I was like, man, this is the best job in the world. Now, look, the team sucked. Yeah. When I, when I took the job, I remember some alumni came up to me. And they was like, we was wondering what fool was going to take this job. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, me. Anybody, I get tuition to change? Yeah, I'm here. So, you know, I, but the longer I was there, mm-hmm. the more I fell in love with it. Man, it's the perfect job. Yeah. What other university, what other head coaching that you know lives in another state and coaches in another state? Right. Like it's, unheard, it's unheard of. Right. But it's like, also, I brought in 25 kids a year. I was going to say, you changed the culture too. Yeah. So it's. Yeah. It was a win-win for both sides. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, it's, it's not Laverne now. Uh-huh. It's the University of Laverne Conference Champs Top 25 program now. Right, exactly. So whoever takes over their program, listen, I didn't take, I didn't touch a single kid. Mm-hmm. I left everyone there. They should go in and win the championship again. You know, just mail me my ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be like a Russell Westbrook if the Lakers won. <laughs> and I will wear it if you send it to me. Yeah. Yeah, what? Well, what what uh, got you into coaching in the first place? Um, you know what? A challenge. Mm-hmm. I just like challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the opportunity to coach after I got finished playing, 
And my, at the time, junior college coach was the AD at a college. And he's like, man, you should just come coach. I'm like, man, I don't want to coach no basketball. I'm going to be on TV. <laughs> I went to school to be on TV. And that's what I was going to say. Your background's in journalism, yeah. you media. Know, I'm going to be the next Stuart Scott. You know, that's what I thought, you <laughs> yeah. know. But then uh, I quickly learned that, you know, the Southern dialect doesn't go outside of the Bible Belt states. <laughs> <laughs> Or so I mean now anyone can get a job. Listen to Sandy yeah. Sharp and Charles Barkley. Right, right, right. But you then you you got a job in Cincinnati right out of school, didn't you? No, so I started at at, at uh, WGCL in Atlanta. Okay. Um, then I got hired at um, Way TV in Huntsville, Alabama. Mm-hmm. Worked there for a couple about almost a year. Then got hired in Cincinnati at the ABC station, mm-hmm. which um, you know was interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, out of thirty news and sports photographers. You only got three brothers. Right. In 2006, 2007, you know, you had, I'm not going to call her name, but you had OG. I'm going to call him OG. You had OG that would have been there forever. And then you had me that had just come in. And then we had another guy that did um, that did the sports. And that's out of 30 photographers back in 2006, 2007. That was in Cincy? In Cincinnati. That's kind of shocking. Yes. Yeah. It was right after. So it was probably like. I want to say my boy Ty was at one. Then I had another. Or uh, Barry was at another one. So he's probably in the whole city, man. You probably had like six black photographers out of four news stations. That's wild. If yeah. you've ever been to Cincinnati, that's really wild. And this was right after the riots. Remember the riots? I don't remember them, okay. but I remember you telling me about them. But go on. Yeah, this was right after the riots where I guess a young person, young man, had got killed at a mm-hmm. fast food restaurant by police. And, you know, what we saw with George Floyd you know, it wasn't to that effect, but we saw some, you know, get shot up, I think, and then the city just rioted and yeah. and burnt down his own community. That was in 2006? No, I think I want to say that was either four or five. So it was before I got there. It just happened before I got there. Okay. Yeah, I was a baby. I was yeah. a little, little, little thing. Yeah. But, yeah, that was just, to, yeah, so to give also some more feedback or more history, we, back in COVID in 2020, I would graduated from Mizzou and moved back in with my parents, and you were back at my parents, so we became roommates. Right. And in 2020, I was looking for work, and all of the entertainment in Los Angeles had shut down, so I was out of luck in that way, and so I was kind of like drifting and trying to figure stuff out. And uh, Jason approached me here and was like, we should do a podcast, which I had no real background in. I had like an assignment in class one time to like make a <laughs> podcast, but that was like the most I had ever had. But you came up and you're like, I want to do a podcast with just coaches and players and anything basketball related. And like, I got a bunch of guests, like, I just need your help editing and putting it out there. Would you want to do this? And I said, yeah. And we did do it. We put out like a full season worth of we episodes. have two seasons. Yeah, we we have two seasons. We have two Excu- seasons. Excuse me. Yeah, like yeah. We, we we went really like it was a great show. I was I was like really. I'm honestly, yeah, like I'm really proud of that work. <laughs> hey, we still have three in the can. Yeah, we have three big time we, interviews in the can. We do. You know. Oh my god, we still have Sam Farmer in the can. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I just remembered that. Yeah, we have wow. three good ones in the can. Yeah, <clears throat> and we. I mean, so. Yeah, in a weird way, you asking me to do that got me right here, um, like in a crisscrossy way across the United States. Because before that, I had never really produced any podcasts, and so um, this is the guy who like put me on. Well, man, you were you were natural. I used to tell you, Dave D, you're natural, man. It's <laughs> like you know, it's like you just have to get in your groove. Once you get in your groove, it comes out. Like, look, I have to speak at some of these events. Mm-hmm. I don't even practice anymore. I have spoke. So much that I can just think of something just to talk about. <laughs> Sometimes, look, I don't even know what I'm talking about. But long as... Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's one thing to say about You're a talker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as long as people believe you, you know, you can sell uh-huh. anything. But as long as you believe in what you're selling, that's yeah. the key. You have to believe in what you're selling. Like, I took these, you know, people would say crap hole jobs, right? Mm-hmm. But I believed in the vision, you know. And mm-hmm. I actually believed, like, you know, we're going to be champions. And, you know... Three schools, four championships later. It's yeah. like, man, I can't believe I actually, you know, did that. But you just got to believe in anything you're selling. That's why I can't sell. I'm not a good salesman when it comes to houses and products or something because mm-hmm. I have no emotional attachment to it. Yeah. I was going to say, I do remember um, 
coming to you and like always being like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Whenever, because usually it'd just be you and a guest. Um, but we would have a couple episodes where it'd be you and I, and we'd just be talking and stuff. And I definitely came to you a couple times where I was like, I don't know if I, I feel good about this, I'm, like putting myself out there. And yeah, you were super encouraging always. Like you were just saying, no, you're a natural. You gotta just keep talking. You should come on more. Is yeah. what you would say. You should. You should. I still like. I, I yeah. still when I when I go to certain events and camps, mm-hmm. you know, we actually have a following. Yeah. People always asked about the podcast, and they always uh, like, what was Danny Mac up to? You know. So you became like a staple. We gotta damn. Then we gotta release some of those episodes. <laughs> yeah, we have Dr. Tyree. He's like the. Athletic director for diversity and inclusion. We have him oh my in the can. God, yeah, we do. For Kyle Berkeley, we have yeah, him yeah, in the can. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. We, we actually, we actually went, we went from, um, oh my God. from Bud Light to to Don Perignon in those last <laughs> yeah, three episodes. We did, we did. <laughs> oh my God, we gotta release those. Where are even are they? I gotta. <laughs> they're somewhere. They're on a hard drive. I got them. Oh my gosh. Um. Yeah. Wow. Time flies. <laughs> <laughs> But how are you feeling like about Chicago and being up in Chicago? Man. You're gonna be close to the fam. That's gonna be nice. Chicago, I, I fought it for a while. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, I don't wanna go to Chicago. But then COVID happened, and then I was there, and then you know, just being able to walk out of your house and walk. Like I spend twenty to twenty five hours a week in a car in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. I may spend twenty to twenty five hours. A month and a half, or every two months, in the car in Chicago. I just like being in the city. Yeah, I love it. That's one of my favorite things about Chicago. I love Chicago's just public transit. Right, just being able to move around. They, Plus, were, they were like, "Oh my goodness, aren't you worried? It's a lot of crime up there." And I'm like, "Man, it's crime everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's like you know the crime. You have to go looking for it. Like mm-hmm. the one, the one thing that got me really upset was they had that mass shooting." A while back, it was shooting in a park, I want to say. And everyone was like, oh, man, God, it's a shooting in the park. It's in Chicago. It was north of Evanston. If you have any relation to, like, downtown Chicago and Evanston, mm-hmm. that's like 35, 40 miles. It's not even in the city. Yeah. It may be Chicago proper. So I just think sometimes it's just a bad rep that it gets. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that people in Chicago, if you are from Evanston, don't think you're from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't. Yeah, no, I, the last time I was in Chicago, I was crashing at your place. And I use your bike, and I just biked around the city all day. I was having a great time. I didn't have a single <laughs> problem at all. It was a great time. I just put on that um, that Into the Spider Verse uh, soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Just biked around the city and pretended Spider Man was swinging through. And I know Spider Man's from New York, but I feel like Spider Man would be excellent in Chicago. Well, you should have like so. I'm in a bike club, and we ride like they got a ride on Wednesday night that I'm gonna miss a night ride. But sometimes you know they feel film one of the Batman movies. Yeah. So we actually take the bikes down up under there and uh, come out on the other side. Um, where the like that one underground scene t- is yes. with the, the car just like crashing. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah, there was a couple moments in Chicago when I was riding the bike and I was like, felt like I was really in the street. <laughs> but there was you no, know, I actually, for the first time about a month ago, I felt like I was actually from Chicago because I got up uh-huh. and I got my stuff together and I walked to the train station and I act like I knew what I was doing when I didn't. Uh-huh. And I got on the train and I rode it to work, and then I rode it home. And then I got off the train with everyone else and walked home. And I was like, man, I, I feel like I belong yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that that sounds like Chicago. Yeah. That sounds so nice to be able to just take a train straight to work and then ride off. You know, the best thing about it was, you know, after a long, hard day, um, the train stop at my new school is like in the center of their downtown. Mm-hmm. So I found a couple of, you know, Chicago is big on local beer, micro breweries. Mm-hmm. So I found a couple of breweries that, you know, after a long night of practice or long bad game, I can just maybe stop at the brewery, get a drink and ride the train home. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the, that's the best thing. Okay. <laughs> well, being buzzed on a, a subway train is got to be like one of my top five things. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about it. It just like instantly makes you feel that you're like in a movie. Man, when I was getting <laughs> off of the train, I had remember the conductor said, here they come. And I'm like, well, who are you talking to? He's like, the Cubs game just ended. Everybody's about to go back home. True. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, like jammed pack in the summertime too. Ooh, you can get sweaty. See, I didn't know it was too different. So I ride the Metro to work. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know the Metro 
was different from the blue line and the red line. Mm-hmm. You know, but the Metro has nice plugs, nice seats. You know, I can get on there and actually relax. A couple of times I took the blue line home in the first, I was like, oh, man, who am I on this, this train with? So I was like, you know, if I act crazy and they act crazy, then maybe we'll just leave each other alone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The, is there beef between the blue line and the red line? Man, I was told, don't get on that red line and go past White Sox Stadium. So I'd never have. Uh, <laughs> of course, White Sox Stadium would be the, the mark. Have you gone? Have you been to Wrigley? I have rode by it. I have not been yet. Okay. You know, that's a, I'm not going to say a bucket list because I'm not too, you know, excited about mm-hmm. sitting outside in the sun. Right. You know, I have, still haven't been to a Dodgers daytime game. What? I'm, the night, I'm a nighttime type of person. I feel that. I feel that. You need the shady seats. At least I got some friends with some shadies. Yeah, yeah. That's but that's part of the baseball experience is just sweating. In the oh, seat. Dude, I couldn't. It's like horrible, man. Just walk around the stadium. And now you know you can actually walk. So I have been. You know you can walk around the whole stadium now. Dodger. Yes. They connected now. Haven't you can't owe it? I thought you always could. I don't think so because they have yeah. that beer garden in the they Golden Road Beer Garden in uh-huh. the back now. Have you been since that? No, I don't. I haven't been to a Dodger oh, game. Oh, so in the back of center field, like center left, is actually like a brewery back there now. Really? <laughs> yes. I bet beers are like what twenty. No, they were actually affordable. Yeah. I want to say for you know what this is the biggest thing I have learned driving cross country this week. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a chicken connoisseur. I'm yeah. going to start a chicken podcast and just rate fried chicken. Okay. But I actually stopped at Popeyes yesterday. And got a five piece chicken finger and fry meal. Uh huh. Eleven thirty six. And in in L A, that's a twenty dollar meal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, the I couldn't pro- believe it. Yeah, yeah. It gets the food prices immediately. No, and it's not just at Popeyes. It's like your mom and pops places too. Yeah. It's just prices are. You're like, wow, this is nice. I'm like, huh? He's like eleven thirty six. I had to look again, but I was yeah. like, okay, you know. But that's one thing I have noticed since driving mm-hmm. cross country is the yeah the food prices. Like I think today, I sound like all I do is eat, but uh-huh. I stopped at <laughs> um I stopped at Dairy Queen because you know they're hard to find in L A. Uh huh. So I got like a a mini frosty, a mini whatever they call it, where they turn them upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like a box meal. Uh, what are those? Uh. Freezes or something? No, Frosties is from Wendy's. Frosties, yeah, Frosties is from Blizzard. Blizzard, yeah. Got yeah. a mini Blizzard, cotton candy, of uh, course, and... Cotton candy? Yeah, man, I like the sweet flavors. Cotton candy, though. No, and- <laughs> 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 nah, I got a snicker. I got a turtle one, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I didn't mean no cotton candy. <laughs> I got a real tough got Blizzard. Got a real tough Blizzard, you know. Yo, blizzard was so gosh. tough, it couldn't even come out the cup. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I got a cotton candy with sprinkles. <laughs> <laughs> Some whipped cream on top. <laughs> yeah. A dash of cinnamon. And that's, a- and that's after I started with Dutch Bros this morning. <laughs> okay, so Dutch Bros, now that's different. That's different. Seeing those pop up, because those, I don't even, I know they're in San Diego. I don't know if they're It's any- one out towards Eastville area now. Okay. You know, it's the only one I know of in California, because I have made the drive out there yeah. <laughs> from Laverne just to get a caramel apple. You know, I got a buddy out here. Well, he dri- <laughs> does the exact same thing here in KC. Because I don't think there's a Dutch bar in the city. Well, we didn't have a Raisin Cane in the city, in Chicago. Oh, really? So I used to drive up to Rogers Park area to go to that one when we were doing COVID, just mm-hmm. to get some Raisin Cane. But I think we got one closer to us now. That's sad. We got a raisin canes just around the corner. It's a little too close, you know. They should sponsor <laughs> you too. <Yeah. laughs> hey, canes. And stop throwing out these names. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can't cut no checks. Yeah, exactly. We're giving <laughs> just free advertising out here. Um, but where was it? <clears throat> when I went on my road trip, I went through Alabama, and I met your pops. Road tie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, that's where Huntsville, right? Yeah, Huntsville, but you're specifically from um, Muscle Shoals. Muscle Shoals, yes. Right. Yep, the Muscle Shoals music scene. Yes. What's the uh, stars or fame. fame? Fame, fame, fame. Yeah, Fame Music Studios. Fame Music Studios, and I did a tour with your pops through Fame Studios, which I think was the first time he did that. Which is <laughs> really, I'm pretty sure. He, it's probably I mean, he's he probably never he's never, he's never been with me. He never I, took me. I swear it was his first time too, because he was like, I remember coming out and he was like, Yeah, I've it's the first time I've done that. <laughs> and so I was like, pretty sure. Maybe I'm wrong. No, you're probably right. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember getting to your parents and there was a full plate of barbecue 
ready for me. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's every day. Chicken, grilled chicken, and I remember <laughs> I was like, so, <laughs> I was so dazed off the um, off the drive. I was like coming in, I was just like not my head was just like not there, and I was like kind of trying to catch up. And your mom Rose was, <laughs> she's like, what do you want the food or not? <laughs> she's like, I'll heat it up. What do you want? Yeah. But yeah, and I got the full fixing for that weekend, and uh, I'm forever grateful. That was the first time I've ever been that deep south, too. I remember driving past uh, cotton fields. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like the first time I've ever seen that. You know, those cotton fields, you know, they're, they're very popular. Yeah. <laughs> back, back being in now. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> popular is one a word. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> I had to pull over. I I felt real West Coast. Did you touch old, it? Did boy. you get out of here? Yeah. <laughs> That's what everybody does. I was like, damn. <laughs> I've only seen these in like documentaries and textbooks. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and they were right there. <laughs> so all my friends, when I look on Facebook, all my friends' kids always take a picture in the cotton field. <laughs> it's like my baby. They're really popular, you yeah. know. Get a picture in the cotton field. It's a tourist destination. Yeah, but no, growing up, man, my one of my first jobs was oh. not picking cotton, mm-hmm. but chopping cotton. You know, have you ever heard of that? No, I have not. So when they plant the rows of cotton, uh-huh. you know, when you know some people used to plow the rows, right? Uh-huh. But it, they wouldn't get all the weeds. So you have workers that go out there and like with a hoe and chop the weave from the, uh, under the cotton to uh-huh. keep it from smothering the plant. Uh huh. So as time and equipment got better you know a lot of farmers stopped breaking the ground they didn't plow the cotton anymore they used to put something in it called nitrate or something and make Mm -hmm. the cotton grow super big but then you would still get the same people that would go down the rows of cotton and chop the weeds from underneath really yeah damn that's some serious work right there no it's real easy like you know, it's probably, look, the guy from Alabama, oh, it was real easy. Yeah, yeah, no way. <laughs> it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. No, no, it's not bad as it sounds. It's like, I could, I got up to the point where I could get, I could do 10 rows. Because you walk down, it could be 10 of you all, uh-huh. and you just walk down the rows. And if you see weed, you go over there and you chop the weed, and you come back to the middle row. So it's just literally just walk, it's a lot of walking. Okay, okay. You know, and stuff, but. It's yeah. not bad. It paid really good money. Yeah, I bet as a fourteen year old. Yeah, fourteen. Yes, yeah, I'm yeah. doing it at fourteen. You're probably living it up. Yeah, I had man every Jordan, every yeah. You know. Right, you got the sneaker veteran hat on oh, right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. show it off a little bit. Shout out to my kids. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. OG in the game. I I sometimes catch uh, a a shoe or two off the off Santa's sled every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> and one of the grand moves, I always, you always like leave some shoes for me. I'm like, oh yeah, Jason was here. <laughs> Yeah, I left your dad some gear, some uh-huh. um, Laverne gear. Um, you know he likes the bowling like shirts. Oh yeah, with yeah. The collar. So yeah, I had yeah. some shirts that I left him, and I noticed he had one on before I left. Mm-hmm. And my dad has a particular level of swag. <laughs> it's like when you first at first glance, you're like, "What's going on there?" But then there's an appreciation for it where you're like. He was like, what am I going to tell people kind. if I ask? I said, you just tell them you're a donor. <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm going to tell them I'm the coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nice of anyone believes that, it's going to humble into the gym. I was like, hey, you're my agent. If anybody asks, he comes to Because he, he came to the game. They yeah. ask you, you're my agent. Okay? I can see that. <laughs> when he puts those shades on sometimes, you know. Or when he puts those glasses and he look up at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what what else should we got we should chat chat about. Man, you know it's like it's good to see you out here in Kansas City finding yeah. your own. You know, I my first recruit in the twenty six class. It's probably gonna be your sister. <laughs> what? My first recruit that I'm gonna recruit is probably gonna be your sister in the class. Of, it's just, she's class of twenty six, I think. Uh huh. Well, you get her to play basketball, please. No, she's going to play. She's, has she agreed? No, she's playing. She's playing. She played in a tournament last week in Phoenix. We went to Phoenix, uh-huh. and she played. Well, I'm, I know she's playing now. Right. But every time I talk to her about playing ball in college, she's like, no, I'm not doing that. Dude, she's already, you know, she just doesn't know. It's the confidence. She doesn't know how good she can be. Mm-hmm. She's already six feet. Yeah. You know, And she can dribble, and yeah. she can shoot. I tell her this all the time. My little sister, who's um, junior in high school, um, is 
just a baller. Just it comes naturally. And yeah, I've been telling her to come do basketball on the next level, but she's more interested in the arts, it seems. But those kids like that, you know, I coach them. They're they're so mm-hmm. intelligent. They're so they just like uh, basketball mm-hmm. is something I do. Yeah, you know, she, if it comes down to her playing and getting in a school that she really wants to go to, she's gonna play. Yeah, <laughs> you know, she really likes Chicago too. Yeah. I can see her. I can see her there. In Chicago. Yeah, I can see her and Kaya. Yeah, you know? for sure. Are you gonna get Kaya though? Well, That's I don't think question. I think Kaya's done. You know, she's more of a. Um, Runner now, cross uh-huh. country. Um, you know, you know, you have you have your kids, and every kid has a different personality. Mm-hmm. You know, Kaya, I think she has more of my personality. Mm-hmm. I was talking to her about her first track meet, and she was like, and no, she didn't even know what she said, but she was like, "Man, I ain't know how fast I was until I started racing people." <laughs> <laughs> Or it's just something like, you know, and then she doesn't mean anything about it. It's just her personality, yeah, you yeah. know. Like, how did you do? Great. What did you what, what do you mean? How did I do? You know, it's like I'm in I'm offending her by uh-huh. asking her, how did she do? You know, it's like, duh, don't you already know? Well, I can, I can still remember watching Kaya and Darby play together and watching Kaya's Kaya had some serious confidence back then. <laughs> yes, man. Yeah. I, she didn't I don't know she, where she got that from. She had no fear. No really. <laughs> <laughs> I do, <laughs> but um, yeah, she has no fear. She just roll over and she get knocked over and like go scattering across the court and be back up and pickpocket the point guard. So, what's been the most exciting thing for you in yeah. this podcast and here? Like, this place is awesome. Yeah, this. I mean, like th- this. Uh, this whole like journey, like through this bookstore, has been s- thrilling and super exciting to me. I feel like I came in here and immediately it was just kind of like, like a, you know, like a spark plug. Just like I just met and I saw a lot of things like and with Will has been super encouraging about just doing it, executing any of my ideas. And when I first saw this place, I was just like, the space is so cool. I want to do something. You can use it as a backdrop. You can use it whatever like there's so many ideas I still have plenty of ideas that I still want to do but like one of my first thoughts was that NPR tiny desk upstairs I was like it looks like NPR tiny desk like if you just move some stuff around and then NPR tiny desk had a competition um open competition for uh you know to send something on and I don't we didn't win but um we submitted, and I filmed my buddy here, Swoovy, who will be on the podcast, and um, and his his band, and we like woke up super early in the morning. It, we like got here before it opened. I didn't want to be any cl- close to opening at all, so we got here like six in the morning. Had a whole band, like a full band. We had saxophone, we had drums, we had keys, um, we had uh, vocals, and we had um, forgetting the other some more brass um so we had a whole band up here at like six in the morning first time i was filming it was me i was the only one who's doing it i had two cameras set up and we filmed that and i remember that every time i'd film one of the bell towers is what i call it prosperous bell tower it feels like almost like church because it's early in the morning it's live music and i will will i kind of taking this from will his saying is closest you can get to God is through live music is um and I feel the same way when when someone is really hitting that place it definitely feels like something is emerging like two worlds is kind of are com- kind of coming together and um yeah when we filmed that it was amazing like it was just it feels so good every single time it feels so good like we're really like capturing these moments of, of like local artists and just like these conversations um, like that's what I, I, the people you'll hear this a lot about Kansas City is like a lot of people when they first ask what's your favorite thing about Kansas City you'll always hear oh I love the people and it's actually it's real like the people here are really great and and just yeah really good people and um, before the podcast I'd have really great conversations with people and be like this is something that I wish I could remember every single bit of what we're talking about and so the podcast just was like, I was like, well, I, on top of kind of entertainment value, I just want an archive of like the people I meet, you know? Right. And so that's been thrilling, learning new stuff. This, the zine, 
coming out with the publication, working on that, like in a field that I haven't worked on since like high school newspaper um, and like doing stuff like that. And like I said, when I came in here, I just like saw magic and I feel like it's like just like always there. And it's just like an energy that is like constantly like I'm, I feel like I see so much going this way and just with the political world we're in right now i feel like a lot of people are turning away from like that technology like you just saw meta is officially a failure um and you're seeing people like turn more to local business and stuff and so you're gonna see like businesses like prosperos that are like i was telling you like sign and trade like we trade books for in-store credit and stuff like that and whatever like these old school kind of businesses i think you're gonna see kind of thrive in these next couple of years as people turn away um from that and to just be here already to have like built a foundation of music and like multimedia interviews and writing and poetry and having live events here like I I honestly think we're building a culture like we're building something important and that alone is exciting sometimes it gets like tough being out here by myself and you know not having any immediate family like real close but um that usually is what gets me like through it is like just feeling like i am doing something that's really worthwhile and that's as exciting as it gets so i was in vegas and i was laying in a bed you know how you sleep with the tv on and sometimes you hear stuff and you don't hear stuff Mm -hmm. so it goes back to what you said that with the way that the world is now and the economy and everything that it was a report and it said that the side hustle is the new hustle. And it was the numbers that almost over 70% of Americans now have a side hustle. And they just have a side hustle now. It's not for extracurricular activities. It's the side hustle they're depending on that money to get through their lifestyle now mm-hmm. and, and, and things. And I thought that was interesting because, you know, you work at the bookstore. Mm-hmm. This is your side hustle now, mm-hmm. and then you can start producing these, and it just opens up so many. You have live band in here. You had the tiny desk in here. You know, mm-hmm. my favorite tiny desk is the Gucci Man one. Have you ever seen that one? Uh, the Gucci one? The Gucci Man one? I didn't even know Gucci Man was on Tiny Desk. Oh, dude, he rocked it. Holy shit, you just he, opened the door for it, me. Like, he, 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 he rocked it because uh, his producer, Zaytoven, uh-huh. was actually playing the live piano oh, in the damn. organ, doing, and he was rapping... I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, like, no. I'm gonna go home and watch this. Yeah, but that was one of my favorite ones. Um, but Mag Miller is my, you know, is the be- my favorite. I like put that on comfort. That's like comfort stuff. Just put let it run. But you're taking these artists, yeah, from different areas, mm-hmm. and you're putting them in the same place, mm-hmm. and it's showing that you know music, yeah. like you said, can connect. And like you, you, you said, your boss said it's the closest thing, closest way you can get to heaven, but. Yeah. You know, music is the one thing that, you know, keeps keeps us going during during those times. Yeah. You know, like COVID showed us that things can change in the blink of an eye. Mm-hmm. What was your side hustle during COVID? We started a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> because we had to reinvent ourselves in order to stay to stay relevant. And I think that's what, you know, this generation, you know, the generation with Kaya's, Kaya's generation, man, they're already 10 years late. Ahead of us, where we were ever going to be, ever going to go, mm-hmm. you know. Like I remember when her and Darby was in second grade, and they were coming home second, third grade. They were doing coding in second and third grade back then. Mm-hmm. So it, it just it's just a matter of time. Yeah. I, well, that was that was my <clears throat> that was the job I got uh, in COVID. Was I was teaching kids STEM activities. I was teaching them to code, even though I don't know how to code. I was teaching them <laughs> the basics of coding, which was like not going to go very far because I didn't know how to code. But yeah, no. I just, but when yeah. you when you hit, to hear you talk about the bookstore and, and 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 your purpose on being here, that's how I feel about the new place where I'm going. Yeah. You know the. Now, look, I had a great athletic director at Laverne. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shout out Scott Winterburn for letting me be who I am and run my program the way I want to run it. You know, but this AD, his name is Glenn, that hired me at Elmhurst, they have the same same personality. Mm. You know, just different, maybe a different generation. He's like, hey, man, it's your sport. You run your sport. You know, you come to me if you need something, and I'll help. But he was the first person 
that didn't call to interview me. He called to have a conversation. Mm. You know, and he was like, let's just have a conversation mm-hmm. and see if we on the same page or if it fit. And, you know, and after that conversation, he said, we'll decide what you decide what you want to do and I decide what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And then after we had the we talked for like an hour, hour and a half. Mm-hmm. And then, he, you know, we called back and said, hey, you know, we'd like to like for you to interview with the committee. And I just thought that was the one thing that I liked about Glenn is when they brought me on campus. They treated me like a like a person and, and not a uh, not that Laverne didn't, but. Mm-hmm. He made a conscious effort not to introduce me to every black person on campus. <laughs> <laughs> Connections. <laughs> you know, because other interviews I've been on, look, I didn't been on three a lot of interviews uh-huh. for schools in Chicago. And the first thing they do, oh, this is such and such. Oh, uh-huh. this is such and such. Oh, this is such and such. And we both standing there like, okay, what's well, up? What's such up? and such. You know. Yeah, yeah. But you know, he he did he didn't and I told him that afterwards. And he was like, Man, I didn't want to do you like that, you know. <laughs> he slowly closes the the door behind him with all, the rest of the black colleagues. <laughs> He's like, "We weren't gonna do that ever." We were good, <laughs> you know. But I, I thought, you know, that, like it's the small things like that yeah. that you you actually remember. And then the the big thing, you know, Scott was about family. Uh-huh. You know, Glenn is about family. Um, but you know, like I told people, I just felt like this school was the right fit for the right time. I love that. Um, well, just him calling you and being like, let's have a conversation. Yeah. That feels like a perfect fit for you. Right. Yeah. It's like, let's talk. Yeah. And then it was like, you know, he was like, I'm very transparent. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, me too. You know, and so we were able, we were actually able to talk about a lot of different topics. Right. You know, like being full and transparent mm-hmm. and what worked and what didn't work. And, you know, I met, it's another gentleman. He's in a, a higher position on campus. And I remember asking him on an interview. I had like an eight hour interview. Uh, when I went for the job to the own campus, and I remember asking him, "Am I safe out here? Because <laughs> it's, it's an affluent neighborhood. Mm. It's real affluent neighborhood. It's kind of like putting a school in. If you're in Miami, Coral Gables, or if you're in LA, it's like having a school in our neighborhood in La Okay, you know, yeah, that those are the homes that surround the school. Okay, yeah. And I was like, I asked the one guy, I said, "Man, am I, am I gonna be safe out here?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was like, "You know." You might get pulled over a couple of times when you first yeah. start out here. He's like, I'm not gonna lie to you, but he was like, you know, if that happens, just let me know, yeah. and you know, and we'll we'll take care of it, you know, uh-huh. and you know, and some people may That's take nice. some people may take that the wrong way. Mm-hmm. It's like, look, you know, our neighborhood. If I see somebody black in our neighborhood that don't belong, I'd be like, what are they doing over here? <laughs> 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 My wife would be like, she's like, stop it. I'm like, no, nah, I just. I ain't never seen them. I'm just trying to. <laughs> are they lost? Do we need some help? <laughs> You're worse than the. You know <laughs> I'm just trying to see if they need some help. Because you know, I am the mayor, remember? I'm the mayor. Yeah, yeah, right, you right, have right. to check in with me before you come <laughs> in that neighborhood. You're the gatekeeper. I'm the gatekeeper. I know oh it. Oh my God. I know everybody. Look, I'm worse than that woman looking out the window. <laughs> I know everybody. I know what car they drive. <laughs> You got the we we let you in with the back house and now now look at you. I remember when I moved into the back house, your mom told the neighbors like, "Look now, if you see somebody black walking in our backyard in the side gate, don't worry about it. It's Jason. He lives here." I remember that. She was stressed about that. (laughs) She's like, "Okay." Then shout out to your dad. He bought me the little uh, Crescent Valley Sheriff deputy stickers. Yeah. So I have one on my car, so I feel like I'm, you know, they used to wave at me. Uh-huh. That's what my, that's my dad's cheat sheet right there. He's like, just donate whatever, and they give you a sticker. <laughs> but you know, like I, so it comes down to recruiting. That oh, that's just a joke. Mm. But people in athletics, if you look at some of the makeup of teams, people recruit who they're comfortable recruiting. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why if you look at some teams and they may be all a certain complexion or a certain race. I mean, it's not that they're bad people. That's just who they're comfortable recruiting. Yeah. You know, I think the teams that I've coached have been so successful because I'm comfortable recruiting everybody. Right. You know, it's like um, you just, you know, people do, people are creatures of habit. Yeah. You know, and you do what you're comfortable doing. Right. You recruit shooters. Oh, shooters. You got to <laughs> yeah. be able to shoot. Yeah. No, 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 no. 
makers. Yeah. Hey, yeah everybody can guess. shoot, but yeah. like, can 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 you make it? Yeah. Right. You know, but no, like when I like damn hers, it just like I said, it just it just felt like home. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like you know. You always say what you're never gonna do, right? I mm-hmm. said, man. I said after this Laverne run, I said, man, I ain't build, I ain't rebuilding no more teams. Mm-hmm. I'm sick of building teams from scratch. Then this opportunity comes, so you never say what yeah. you're gonna do because the Lord has a different yeah. plan for you every time. But you're good at it. That's why you change entire cultures. You make it into a winning organization. Damn, I, that sounds like I need to be on Pat, Pat Riley's staff, right? Yeah, you yeah, know? that's what I'm saying. See, like Spoke and Coach me, you, and, and Richard, and yeah. we, we're going to the <laughs> we're going to playoffs. Right, exactly. <laughs> no matter exactly. who he's coaching, he's taking them to the playoffs. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. but that's what, that's what you're doing here. Mm-hmm. You're creating a platform for people who normally not know about people, and the thing about you is you're doing it on so many different venues and avenues that I told you, man, you need to start your own production house. I know, I know, I know. This is the next step. This is the next step for sure. Like, I can see the logo now with the hair and the man bun. And... <laughs> <laughs> but I get a lot of uh, samurai. Everyone's like, so you're going with the samurai hair? I like it, man. It, 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 it's you. It fits you. You know, that's what it, I'm it, it fits you. <laughs> now you need the sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get really into it. It's honestly, that might be happening. So but... are you. Are you going to get your mom on here? That's the plan. Well, as soon as she can come out and visit me, ma. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's already been done. I've already crossed the line with my dad. I'm not afraid to use my family for clout. Oh, <laughs> you should, I told you a long time ago. I mean, you should get your dad on here. A lot of stories, man. Yeah. Trust me, I heard them. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, man, I'm I'm just super excited for you. It's, it's so great to see you. I'm so glad that you, like, came through here. And just for me, I feel honored. No, dude, I told you it was Mount Rushmore yeah. or Danny. I got chose over the pa- you got presidents. You got the presidents, the dead presidents. Over the dead presidents, The only ones man. I want to see. If they're not in my pocket, I don't care no more. That's that's <laughs> kinship right there. That's over blood. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm so, so good to see you. I'm so happy that this sounds like a really good fit. I'm really excited to see it. Best believe I will come up to Chicago and visit y'all because I love Chicago. I also love your fam. You guys are so, so – I never forget you guys p- putting me up for so long. and uh, um, You stay with both of my family. Yeah, both both <laughs> of them. Both of them. Both of them. Your mom so. still talking about you now. I think, is she your <laughs> friend on Facebook? Because I think uh, – Man, oh, if she's – I haven't been on Facebook forever, uh, but the thought of me leaving a friend request on – she always asked, what's that Danny doing now? I had such a good time with Danny, you know. I'm like, oh, yeah. I remember I remember being like, because it was just me and your pops and your mom, and not knowing really, I was like, what are we going to talk about? Like, oh, the, yeah. the age gap, like, like everything. Like, yeah, I'm like, I don't know what we're going to talk about. And then, like, uh, we, we were watching the Bama. The Bama was playing somebody. We were watching a Bama game, and uh, we were on the couch, and I just I forget how it comes up, but we start talking about ancient aliens. Oh, dude. oh, and it's over. It's over, dude. Yeah, we're just talking about ancient aliens for it's hours. Over. It's over um, <laughs> for the rest of the night. I still got to get her out to Alien Con. Yeah. Um, I asked her, "Do you really believe in aliens?" And she'll look at me. You know, she's look. Really? <laughs> you think we're the only person in this universe? <laughs> I had that exact conversation. Oh yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> if we go to if we drive to Vegas, we gotta stop by the alien place. Uh-huh. You know the the in the middle of the desert. What's the alien place? Baker. Area 51. Baker. No, Baker, California. Yeah. We have to stop there and get the alien jerky. Remember? It's, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know the um is that what the big thermometer? Yeah. In between Vegas. So and, you know they're building a hotel there now. Shape in the shape of a UFO. It's, oh my god. The structure is up. Wow. I just seen it. Oh my God! But I I gotta get her out to Alien Con. Mm-hmm. Um, every time I see a shirt with an alien on it, I buy it. Um, you know, some people believe in magic. Some people believe in this. And my mom, I guess, believes in alien. Like her, and my, her, and my sister wanted to go to Area Fifty One and storm. You remember that during COVID, where they was going to storm? Yeah, yeah. Them? There was like a they were gonna rush it. <laughs> yeah, we they wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> I can see your mom leading the charge. <laughs> you know, you had to run like this, remember? <laughs> like we had it down. Keep your head down. If I fall, just keep running. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> oh, man. She's going to be pissed, uh, bro. I love you, mom. <laughs> and on that, before we say anything else, 
This is going to get us in trouble. This is Prospero signing out. Thanks for joining us. Coach Pruitt, <laughs> Jason, honestly, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Headball. Of course. Sweet.